did it to me. It's not easy. I didn't talk to him. I haven't seen him. And he spoke this word. Don't let it fall in the ears of a deaf man because you will be the one missing something. Let me show you something. Today, I want to talk on the manifestation or the functionality of the prophetic. But before I get there, I want to start with this and flow together with it. It's called prophetic connection. Somebody say prophetic connection. Say it again, prophetic connection. All right. Second King 4, 8. I told you before, what you need in life is not something, it's somebody. What you need in life is not something, it is what? Somebody. The job you're looking for, somebody has it. Not God. God gave it to somebody. Until you connect with that somebody, you'll remain jobless. I will repeat. There's a lot of things mankind are looking for that is no longer in heaven. It's been released in the earth realm. God entrusted it to individuals. Small, great. Until you connect with that person who had the job for you, you will remain jobless. Somebody say prophetic connection. That is true for a lot of things. This baby is the product of an encounter between you and her. This baby will not come on this earth until you connect with one another. The life of somebody depends on a connection. Let's read 2 Kings 4, 8. Now it happened on one day that Elisha went to Shunem where there was a notable woman. Can, can you put the new American standard, please? Thank you, Lord. Now there come a day. Somebody said there came a day. Just a day. There came a day. When Elisha passed over the Shunem, where there was a prominent woman, and she persuaded him to eat food. And so it was. As often as he passed by, he turned in there to eat food. Verse 9. She said to her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is a holy man of God passing by us continually. Verse 10. Please, let us make a little walled upper chamber and let us set a bed for him there and a table and a chair and a lampstand. And it shall be when he comes to us that he can turn in there. This is a very profound portion of scripture. This woman, she's loaded. Let me use today's terms. Loaded. Never, she needs nothing. She has houses, she has cars, she has a good job, she's making money, business is booming. Besides that, she's in the city she loves to be in, around her own people. She lacks nothing. She's loaded. She's satisfied in every area, literally. What other people chase after, she has it. She's loaded. And she has a great character because there's many people who are loaded. When they get loaded, they become jerks. But this woman, she's loaded but yet humble. She's a submitted woman. How do I know? She asked permission to her husband if they can host the prophet. They were in agreement. Watch me. Whatever you do on earth, let it be an agreement between you and God and between you and your partner. What make many people fail, the Lord spoke to me, is because they do not acknowledge or respect the agreement on earth. The agreement on earth can be between you and your partners or between you and your husband or wife. If you're doing things and there's no agreement, it gives permission to the devil to come and scatter you, to scatter your work. Agreement is powerful. That's why Jesus said, whatsoever you agree on an earth and ask, it shall be given to you. Just an agreement in the earth move heaven. 
But yet, we don't understand those principles, so we do everything disagreeing. I'm going to still do it. You don't agree. God spoke to me. I'm going to still do it. No, no, no. There need to be an agreement. Somebody say agree. She asked her husband, baby, honey, this man I perceive is powerful. He is a servant of God. And he always walked for so long. Can we make some room for him here? She asked her husband. Of course, we know the answer was, yes, baby, you can do it. And she went on and do it. Somebody say agreement. Amen. That is true for ministry. It's true for business. It's true for anything you want to achieve that has a destiny connotation to it. You have to have agreement. We know the story of this girl. I want to show you all the prophetic connection is so powerful. Watch this. She did this not expecting anything. You get that? She connected, she befriended the prophet. She connected to the instruments of God without any expectation in return. Because she's loaded. She has need of nothing. Everybody envy her. But yet we know the rest of the story. She didn't have a child. In other words, she didn't have the opportunity for a legacy. There was nobody to continue her, her greatness and to continue doing business. So if she died, she died with everything she has. The prophet came in. They have a connection. And here's what connection does. Are you ready? Good. Because of this connection, she received an impossible miracle. She received a miracle for something that was impossible. What she couldn't do by her business skills, what her character couldn't do for her, even she was connected to the people of the city because later on she said, I'm among my own people. I'm loved. I'm protected. There is some connection that will give you things that are impossible just because of a connection. Even thing that you don't even pray for. Thing that you put on the side and feeling I'm okay. At least I'm healthy. At least I have a place to sleep. At least I do great business. She was satisfied in so many areas. But yet there was a hidden area killing her that nobody could see. She connected. And God remembered this area. Never forget that. Never forget that. She made room for the prophet. She had a dream that she could not birth until connection was established. She used hospitality to receive baby. She used hospitality to capture a baby. You know, today when we're talking about an offering or tithe, Give to the church, give to a man of God. It is a strange thing for most people because they always like to say, but Jesus paid for it all. Yes, Jesus paid for your redemption. But the Bible says, as long as the earth will be or remain, there will be seed time and harvest time. Is, are we still alive? That means seed time and harvest time are still legitimate and authentic today. But it's not for your redemption. That is through Christ. Nobody's seed can redeem them. But a seed can be profitable. I told you last time. God gave us many weapons to access answers. Prayer, fasting, warfare, you name it. But here is one the most neglected. People don't understand sometimes a seed can do for you more than the prayer does for you. What did this woman pray? Did she pray? Did she pray? She just planted a seed. And she received a baby that prayer couldn't give her. Amen. 
My God. Second King 5, 1 to 2. Watch this. I'm talking about prophetic connections. Second King chapter 5. Verse 1 to 2. Now Naaman, captain of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man with his master and highly respected because by him the Lord has given victory to Aram. The man was also a valiant warrior, but, 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 but he was a leper. Can you imagine giving all this powerful curriculum about an individual and this but has to come in at the end? He won victories. He was a valiant warrior. He was a general of the army of the Syrian. He was powerful, but he was a leper. Verse 2. Now the Armenians had gone out in bands and had taken captive a little girl. Somebody say a little girl. From the land of Israel. And she waited on Naaman's wife. Verse 3. She said to her mistress, I wish that my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria. Then he could cure him of his leprosy. Somebody say prophetic connection. (laughs) Naaman was great and mighty and powerful, but he would have died with his leprosy unless he connected to a little girl. This little girl has no might. She was a slave, but yet she was the answer for the leprosy that no army could do for him. Naaman won battles. He fought armies. He has a team that was so trained, they don't lose. But yet, he has a problem that his might, his reputation, his army can do anything for him. Have you ever been in a place where no matter how great you are, you are struggling with an issue that your greatness cannot solve? Are you catching that? And who's the connection here? A little girl, a slave girl. You know what? My prayer is God open your eyes to see your connector. Amen. Seriously. Yeah. Instead of looking for things, looking, look for people. Amen. Don't look for things. Look for your connector. Yes. There is somebody who's holding the key that you are looking for. You don't have the key. Somebody else has the key. Yes, I, did you hear that? That little girl, she could be neglected. She's a slave. But yet... She has the key for the cure of the leprosy of the greatest man in Syria. Don't neglect people around you. You know, sometimes you can look down on people because they don't look so powerful. But you don't know that the breakthrough you've been waiting for, the frustration of your life, one person has that key. And it's the very person that you're mocking is that person who has the key to unlock Tell your neighbor, don't look at me like that. Please don't look at me like that. I might be your key holder. I might have the key you're looking for. I might have the key you want. My God, don't look at me like that. Don't neglect people. I said don't neglect people. Somebody can be small, yet have the key. To the release of your ministry or your next level or your next promotion. You don't have it, somebody has it. God does that so we respect one another. Hallelujah. You can walk on this guy today. Tomorrow is the bank manager where you are being going to look for the loan. And you will arrive there shaking and suddenly come out nicely dressed. He say, How are you? What are you doing here? I'm looking for a mortgage. Oh, mortgage. Hey. It's you there who crushed me last time. I'm telling you, you are going from TD Bank to CIBC right away. (laughs) Don't neglect people around you, no matter how small they are. Because they can be in the season of weakness, but they will not remain in that season. I prophesy that over your life. You won't remain in that season of weakness. You will come out and be a voice in Jesus' name. Don't look down on people. Even the donkey, don't look down on it. A donkey had to save the life of a prophet because of a connection. Praise God. The little girl gave the key to Naaman and said, Boss, 
I'm not worthy to even talk to you, so I will talk to your wife. She didn't talk to Naaman. She talked to the wife. She said, my master can get cured. I know all the physicians here couldn't do anything. Even you, he's so powerful, but I know the secret. In Samaria, I have the prophet there. And we know the rest of the story. He was cured by the prophet Elisha. Why? Because of a connection. Who was the connection? A little girl, slave little girl. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Judges 6.26. Judges 6.26. We need connection. Connectors, prophetic connection. I'm not talking about just go on Google and start making friends. Those are not friends. I'm talking about people that you're connected with and it influences your destiny positively. It goes like that. Judges chapter 16. 16, please. 16.26. Judges chapter 16, 26. Then Samson said to the boy, somebody said the boy, boy. who was holding his hand, let me feel the pillars on which the house rests, that I may lean against them. Now Samson has no more eyes. They plug out his eyes. Everybody knows Samson was a one-man army. He didn't need an army. The guy shake himself, the Holy Ghost come, and he take a jawbone, and he will kill the whole army. The guy was mighty. You think about Rambo and Arnold Schwarzenegger on your television? Nah, 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 that's nothing. I'm talking about one wild man who never drink wine, consecrated to the Lord since the womb of his mother, with a jawbone of a donkey. That was his Kalashnikov. And he will run through the army and take them down. Here is the same man, so mighty, lost his eyes. So what is he going to do now for his next movement? He's looking for a connector. And who's the connector? A little boy. He said, boy, you will be my eyes today. You, Samson, the mighty one? I'm not worthy to be your eyes. You are the judge of Israel, the visionary of old. Yeah, it's true. But today, I need a connector to finalize my mission. You will be my eyes. Take me by the hand and guide me. The time is coming where even the people who are little, 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 God will use them to be your eye to see things that you never could have seen on your own. I'm telling you the truth. Don't neglect a human being. Save or unsaved. Don't neglect... God can even use an unbeliever to speak to you. Samson was mighty, but until he connects, he will not be able to reach to the pillar. I'm talking about prophetic connection that have a positive impact on destiny. I'm not talking about a connection that we just go play pool. Yeah, that is great just to clear the air. But I'm talking about divine, prophetic, destiny relationship. That's what I'm talking about. People are holding keys. Key holders. For your next advancement. Key holders for your next promotion. Key holder for your next release. Key holder for your next blessing. That's what I'm speaking today. He connected to the boy, and the boy became his eyes, and the boy led him to the proper place so he can release his last movement to finish what he was created for. But here, sometimes we are so arrogant, we think we don't need anybody. I'm smart, I know everything. I can do it myself. I'm going to tell you, God will humble you sometime to bring a person around you, this very person that you despise all your life, he is the key and there's no other option. If you don't go through him, you're going to go ahead. Aha. Uh -huh. You don't go through her, you don't go ahead. There's no other way. You have to go through this person, this woman. That's it. Prophetic connection. What am I talking? Let me talk about Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. 
Jesus could not enter his ministry until he connected to John the Baptist. Yet he was God. <laughs> John the Baptist released Jesus Christ in his ministry. Through baptism. Himself, when he saw Jesus, he said, no, 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 I'm not worthy to untie your laces. Leave it alone. You should be the one releasing me in my ministry. You should be the one baptizing me. Jesus said, uh-uh. This not, is not an earth issue. This is a righteous issue. It's not title for title. It's not elevation for elevation. It's not who has more power than the other. God set it up this way that you are my connector. Regardless of your condition, even if I'm greater than you, you are still my connector. And I will not enter my greatness until you release me. Though you are smaller than I. John the Baptist said, okay, yes, sir. He baptized him. Even God needed a connector in the earth to fulfill his own calling in the person of Christ Jesus. Who are we? Who are we? I'm thinking in my head. And I had to discipline myself because I wanted to tell you something very profound. But we're going to keep that for something else. You know, a lot of people destroy their connectors because they are not wise. They are not discerning of spirits. I want we get in a place where we can see the diamond in the mud. Where you can see value in a broken person. And position yourself accordingly. Prophetic connection is not for a few people, it's for every human being. And I will repeat it again. There are some people, they are holding the key for your success, at least for a phase, given phase. Not because they are better than you. God just gave them that key. And if you despise them, you will turn around that mountain for a few years. I've seen so often in the course of the years where people leave church and they are really mad at pastor. Oh, you know, pastor did this. And oh, pastor is this, that. Pastor is like that. Pastor... And then they go. Somebody said they go. And then after a few months, it's still happening today. They call me. I'm like, ah, you are in another church. Contributing in another church. Now you are going through this problem. Why don't you talk to your own pastor? You know why? I hold the key. I do. And sometimes they want a reference they can come to you so they will go through some leaders. But yet, the leaders do not hold the key. I do. So at the end of the day, you have to come with me even though you don't like me. It is true. I feel like you are in that church, your pastor will bless you, but he has no key for your next level. I have the key. When you will recognize, you will come and repent and I will open that door for you. Until then, keep knocking. Keep knocking. You know when you have a key, you cease to knock. Ah, my God. Jesus said, knock and the door shall be open. But why knocking when you have a key? Have you ever seen somebody knocking and he has the key? If you knock, you have not the key. I have a key. Your neighbor has a key. You need to find out who has your key for your next step. Yes. Hallelujah, somebody. Yes. Instead of knocking on Jesus, I knock, I knock, I knock, I knock, I knock, I knock. Listen, when you knock like that and you knock so loud that your other neighbor show up, you, understand? you are knocking at this door and the neighbor comes and says, Hey, are you knocking? That means nobody's here listening to you. Because even the neighbor can hear you knocking, yet you don't knock at his door. So stop. 
and said, who has the key of this door? Who has the key? My hands are hurting of knocking too much. I need the key. Who has the key to open this for me? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. First Kings 17. First Kings 17. Quick, quick, quick. Verse 15 to 16. In this revolution of grace, I've seen how God brought the right people in my life supernaturally, connected to the other, connected to this, and, and things begin to go like that, like a boomerang. Bah, 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 bah. All right? One after the other. Because of connection. Connection is powerful. I was looking for somebody to translate my books in French because I don't have time to do that. And it costs a lot of money. To translate a book, you have to pay probably six, seven, ten thousand, depending on the size of the book. And uh, surely, I was one day in Burundi, and I was ministering to couples. And there was this couple in the meeting, they were about to really divorce. But the Spirit of God touched them, the husband got born again, and he reconciled with his wife, and they worked out so beautifully. Today, they live together after all these years. Now, you always ask God, how can I meet this Elijah guy? To at least say thank you to him. Me, I have no clue because it's a crowd. I don't know who's these people. So after what, six years, she found me. And she found me, we begin to talk on WhatsApp. And she begin to tell them the miracle God did. And she asked me, what are you up to? I said, yeah, I'm writing books now. I'm on the sabbatical and all this. I'm trying to catch up on a few things. And uh, he said, wow, I want these books on marriage. I said, yeah, but it's in English, you know. He said, yeah, but we speak English. I say, we are working on a translation. He said, who's doing it? I say, I'm looking, you know, I'm myself, I'm trying to do it, but I don't have my time. He said, listen, I will do that for you because I am a professional translator for African Union. And I have a team of four people working on my, my staff. And so for what you've done for me, I want to contribute to your ministry. So all your books, I will translate them in French with my team. And it will be accurate and be on time because they are Christian as well. Hallelujah. Somebody said prophetic connection. I just saved thousands of dollars just because of one connection. Do you understand? You need your faith to stir up to know that God works that way. Because when you don't know God works a certain way, you will never pull your faith in that direction. Let no man fool himself that will receive anything from the Lord except by faith. James 1, James 1, 7. That's just the way God works. I'm building your faith right now for encounters. I'm building your faith right now for divine encounters. I'm building your faith right now for prophetic encounters in the name of Jesus. What you need is not something, it's somebody. Connection. Here we are, verse 15. And she went and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and he and she and he and her household ate for many days. Verse 16. The bowl of flour was not exhausted, nor did the jar of oil become empty, according to the word of the Lord which he spoke through Elijah. Now watch this. This is the story of the woman the, of Zarephath. I like what is said in verse 15. Go back verse 15. She went and did according. Somebody say according. It means she listened to instructions. Sometimes you are just one link away from your next breakthrough. One connection away. One instruction. You know, Christian like prophetic word without instruction. The prophet gave an instruction to the woman. He said, go and bring me your last meal that I may eat. That's an instruction. She had the choice to either obey or disobey. Or ask for 40 day prayer and fasting so she can hear the voice of the Lord. But by faith she obeyed. That's what is written. She went and did according to what the prophet told her. In other words, she brought the last meal. 
You know, when you enter in the prophetic realm, nothing makes sense. Here's the problem of the church. Can I tell you? Okay. The church is so smart that the mind leads the spirit. It should not be that way. The church will be so powerful and spiritual that the spirit leads the mind. But in most people's life, it's the mind that leads the spirit. When the mind leads the spirit, you become a narrow-minded Christian, even in the thing of the spirit, because the spirit is too big for the mind. So you just shrink the spirit arena into a mindset. Your brain should not lead your spirit, if not you're a carnal believer. That's why this prophetic atmosphere is important because I want to challenge you to reverse such. I want to challenge you to know you are spiritual more than you are natural. I want to challenge you that you know we live in the supernatural realm more than the natural that you see. You are a spiritual being. You are not a natural being. You live in this body and when you die, this goes back to dust. Your spirit goes to where it comes from. You are a spirit. You are not just a human being. There is a spiritual being in this human body. That's why most people, everybody, always ache for the supernatural. Everybody ache for what is beyond this earth realm, isn't it? Everybody, believe or unbeliever, you know why? Because God put eternity in you. That's why you ache. You have the DNA of the prophetic. That's why you ache for what is outside of the realm of the visible. And if the church doesn't train the people in the prophetic, they will go receive their stuff to the psych- from the psychic. Every psychic you see sitting there on the side of the road reading your poem and telling you what's going to happen tomorrow, they are all anointed in the womb of their mother to be prophets. But yet they submit to, to another spirit. But the Bible says the gift of God is without repentance. In other words, when God gives you a prophetic gift, even though you're a psychic, it still works. The only difference, you're operating under a different authority that is the devil that can pervert your gift. That's why people go to the witch doctors. Because they want a supernatural expression or demonstration or touch. They want a supernatural connection with the spiritual realm. The church has become so mental. Mental. Brainy, mental, intelligent, calculatory, calculative, Cartesian, that the spirit is quenched. The Lord spoke to me, it's not people insulting the spirit of God that quench me anymore. What quench me is when people give notoriety to the brain versus the spirit. Are you hearing me, somebody? This woman obey, even though it didn't make sense. Seriously. Who was in his right mind could see a poor widow, no husband, just one meal with his little baby, and this prophet has been eating anyway. <laughs> yeah, because, because, you know, the raven has been giving him food, so he's not skinny like everybody else. He gained a little bit of weight because him alone in the family is eating. Everybody else is fasting by force. And now you see this skinny lady that have not eaten, eaten much with her baby, and this fat prophet shows up on the scene. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. That says the Lord. What are you doing? I'm picking up pieces to cook my last meal, and my son and I will just going to die. He said, okay, that says the Lord. Bring me the food for me. For me. How many people said, false prophet, man, false prophet. This man is not from God. This guy is not from How many people? You will discern with your eyes and your brain will calculate. You'll say, man, this is, un- this is ungodly, man. Every time God wants to do something supernatural, he will ask you something that doesn't make sense. Landa bagaya I told you all God asked me to take $2,500 
and sow it. And that $2,500, I had a choice. I either send it to this beautiful government <laughs> and make payment arrangement, all right? So when you give $2,500, payment arrangement, you qualify. Even by law, they can't get mad at you anymore because you tell them, here is the portion, divide the rest in one year. And God said, no, don't make arrangement. Take the whole amount that you have for your arrangement and give it. Uh, what about the arrangement? Just give it. But the phone calls, give it. The interest rate is 30%. Give it. Uh, what about my son? They will take him out of the residence. Give it. It is hard. Because you can rely on your might and your mind and say, at least this will give me peace. We live in a country where you can make installments. But God said, for this one, no installment. Sow a seed. Manda bagayalaba. I tell you the story. Just in a matter of weeks, $22,000 came back to me. Yeah. So I didn't make arrangement. Now I pay everything. Praise God. Somebody say, trust God. And obey his instructions. It makes no sense. Give me all your meal. All the little mama with your baby tired like this. Last meal, a fat prophet who's been enjoying steaks and good meal from heaven suddenly is asking you for your last meal. Most people jump over that scripture because they say, oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> because the Bible says, take care of the widows. What type of prophet is this? You know what? When God gives you an instruction, obey. Somebody say, obey. obey. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, give me 10 minutes. Prophetic functionalities, and I will pray for you from this perspective God gave me. Listen to this. Now, this thing here, I'm developing that in the school of the prophets. I have about 14. 14 functionalities. No, excuse me. I have 25. 25 functionalities from the prophetic office. Doesn't mean you're a prophet. I'm talking about every one of us is called to prophesy. So I talk about from John chapter 3, verse 1. Nicodemus was in the office of the Pharisee. Number two, his name was Nicodemus. And number three, he was a ruler. So the functionality is a rulership. So I want to talk about a few functionalities. For today, I will cover probably three or four quickly, all right? You will find yourself in some of this, all right? When you find yourself in some of this, receive it. All right? Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Number one functionality, utterances slash wisdom. Utterances slash wisdom. There is people, no matter what their office is, they are functioning in the realm of wisdom and utterance. I will explain. And some of you, you will feel like, yeah, 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 I know it. How do you know that you operate in that realm of utterance and wisdom? Have you ever been in a place where people come and ask you a question? All right? On a subject you never study, you never seen it on Google, you never seen it on YouTube, you never seen that in your academic. You don't know it. Somebody say you don't know. Really say it. You don't know. Now they ask you a question you never known and you don't know. And suddenly, you know. You begin to talk and you open your mouth. You begin to give the answer that you never heard anywhere. You never read anywhere. You never seen anywhere. You never been taught anywhere. And suddenly, you begin to give them accurate answer for the question they ask in a domain that you never learn. It happened to me all the time. Utterances. That's why Jesus said to his disciples, do not be afraid when they bring you to the judge. Don't worry about what you're going to say. 
at that very moment, I will give, I will give you the word that you should say. So utterances, that prophetic functionality, it functions with things that are new. It is not the old knowledge that you remember. It is a fresh given by the Holy Spirit right there at that moment for you to speak forth, to release wisdom, to answer a question. One day they approached Jesus. They wanted to trick him. You know, sometimes people want to trick you. And they asked him a question. They said, Jesus, should we pay taxes? That's a tough question. If Jesus said no, they will say, see, you're against the government. You don't respect the government. At that moment, Jesus moved in utterances, functionality. And he goes like that. Whose picture is on the coin? That is not given to you just because you read the book. This is a wisdom and an utterance that the Holy Ghost just download on you at that very moment, right away, so that you can be an answer. So I say, what's picture? They say, Caesar. I say, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. That is utterance. The church of God is wondering and sometimes being a fool because we have no answer for the world. And we think the more we read Google, the more we will have knowledge. Yes, that is true. But there is another dimension where God brings you information at that very moment where it's needed. And you begin to speak divine counsel without your brain never knew about it. Somebody say utterances. It's wisdom. Solomon, they brought, the two women brought a baby. One woman said, this is my baby. The other woman said, this is my baby. The one who's alive is mine. Solomon, utterances. You don't read this in a book. Your grandfather doesn't tell you this. He said, bring me a knife. You don't read this anywhere. Oh, hallelujah. I am loving this. Can you imagine you begin to function in the realm of utterances and wisdom? Where they trickle you with any question and you bring the answer because God gave it to you. It is precise. It is right on. It is here, available. But most Christians are sleeping. You got to grab it. Is that happened to somebody else more than I? Than I? Where, where, where you, you are in a place and they ask you a question and you have no clue and suddenly you open your mouth and the answer begins to flow. Have you ever been there? Come on, lift up your hand if you experience this. That's a functionality of utterances. But we give some time credit to the fact I'm smart. Smart only give you what you knew or the basic of what you've been taught. You know, when Peter stood up and Jesus asked, who do people say I am? Some say you're Jeremiah. Some say you're Elijah. He said, but you, who do you say I am? And Peter said, Dad, the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus turned to me and said, you just move in utterances right now. Because this one was not given you by flesh and blood, but by my Father that is in heaven. He received a fresh, immediate download with the proper answer according to heaven. And he never learned it. Prophetic functionality called utterances slash wisdom. You need that for your interviews. I'm telling you. I say you need that for your interview. When they ask you a question, they know, they expect a certain answer. But they ask you a question, they can read you through. But by prophetic utterances and wisdom, you begin to step into the higher level. You know, God is available to make you tap, you, to make you tap higher. Do you understand? There's a realm that has unlimited knowledge. It's called the realm of the spirit. Unlimited knowledge. The question they are asking you, God has the answer. You know why they ask you, and he can give it to you right there at that moment. Praise the Lord. I remember when I was in sales. Of course, you get pay commission. Praise the Lord for that. I will go and stand in front of this customer. After everybody pound him and pound him and pound him, and he's like, no, nah, I'm not buying anything. No, nah, I'm not buying anything. As he's leaving, I say, sir, please wait. And he come. 
by prophetic utterances, I knew what to tell him at that moment that make him turn from the door to inside the store again. And now you never think about it. God just put word in your mouth. Can I go further? Everybody in this earth responds to certain utterances. For you single people, when you go talk to this lady, you can say things that turn her off right away. Huh? Because of what you study. But you can have utterance. Wisdom. It is true. Okay. You think God is not into those things? So why do we do marriages? Do you think God is not into those? You're laughing. Next time you go to talk to her, tell God, Lord, fill me up with wisdom and utterances. You know, you know what type of word her heart responds to. Same thing for my boss. Praise the Lord, somebody. Okay, let's jump over that one. Let me give one more. Faith. The utterance, uh, the functionality of faith. Like Abraham. Abraham was a prophet, but he functioned in the functionality of faith. You know, there are some people, it doesn't matter if it's red or blue. They are always sure and secure that God will do it. You've seen some people like that? Everything is going against them. But for whatever reason, they still walk with style. They are broke, but they remember that God will bless them. And they refuse to change. I mean, you wouldn't wonder, seriously? Seriously? Faith. It's a functionality. I'm not talking about faith to believe in God. I'm talking about the faith that makes you stand no matter what. And people don't understand why you're still standing. And they always all feel you're so loaded and so powerful. Yet in reality, if they could see the reality, you are dying, but yet you feel like, no, I'm alive. And you don't force it. It is given to you. It's a functionality. And that faith sometimes is expressed to even believe for other people. People who function, people who are in the functionality of faith, when you talk to them and you bring them their problem, your problem, you know what, I can't pay the bill and this happened to me and this happened to me. They open their mouth and just speak one word and you feel like a million dollars suddenly. You begin to be strengthened. Why? They have the functionality of faith. They just energize you and share with you their faith through the word. Suddenly your problem begins to be small. You wipe your tear, you feel like, yeah, why was I even complaining? Because you just spoke to somebody who is in the functionality of faith. We want men and women to function in that dimension. So you believe no matter what. Let me jump a little bit. Intercessors. Functionality of intercessors. The intercessors, I call them the twisting arms. An intercessor stands in the gap and reverse the counsel of heaven to the benefit of earth. I will explain. Don't get mad. But that's the truth. God said, you, the people of Israel, I'm going to destroy you. And Moses rose and walked in the counsel of heaven and said, Father, no. You can't do that. Kill me instead of killing these people. I'm reversing the decision of heaven. An intercessor is different than a prayer warrior. That's another functionality. An intercessor is an arm twister. Somebody said, nobody can change God's mind. No, it's not true. You can change God's mind. It's in the Bible. God wanted to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, isn't it? Abraham interceded. And he spared Lot and his family. He changed the council of heaven. It is time for the church to anoint real prophetic intercessors who can rise up and stand and wrestle with heaven. The prophetic intercessor wrestle with heaven. The prayer warrior wrestle with demons. 
You see, the prophetic intercessor changed the arms of God, changed the counsel of heaven to benefit you. God wanted to kill. Your job is out. Somebody wrestle. Lord, please, let mercy come to this family. Let mercy come to this young boy. Let mercy, oh God, mercy, do not judge according to their deeds. Mercy. Wrestling. But the intercessors do that. But the prophetic warriors, they, they fight demons. Somebody say fight demons. This is real. They wrestle with spiritual beings in the spirit. Mandaya balagadas. Then they don't fight with heaven. They tell the enemy, bring it on. They are anointed. I won't cover much of it. These one work with angels together. The prophetic warriors, they wrestle with spiritual beings. And they are always backed up by angels. Every time you see them, they're always in the prayer, in the fighting mood. In the name of Jesus, I crush you. Devil, I rebuke you. They don't talk to God, they talk to demons. I rebuke you. I cancel your activity here. In Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. And they're loud and crazy. And sometimes they intimidate everybody. If you're like, why cannot don't be quiet? Nobody goes to war quiet. Bullets are flying, blood are flying, head are bowed, pumping left and right. There's a killing happening here. We need an anointing for that. And I'm going to give you the last here for stop. I want to recommend you get involved in the school of the prophets. All this stuff are more details. And so you can rise up in this era in which we are. And not just be a smart Christian, but being a wise, spiritual, balanced, holy ghosted man and woman of God. If we remain ignorant, the devil will eat our lunch. But if we rise in the knowledge of God and know who we are, when we begin to discover the functionality and the gift God has given to us, we begin to make a difference. But if you don't, you'll just be waiting for the next person to do something for you. I hear me, somebody. Here's the last one for today I will give you. This one is important. The functionality of prosperity. Prophetic prosperity. This one. The kingdom of God needs it. This is the functionality of a man and woman who can stand up and put an end to a famine. The functionality of prosperity. These one, when they teach, let's say, if they come on the pulpit or they teach somebody, they always teach based on principles. They will not tell you, just pray and you will have money. They will say it. God want to bless you, but here is the instruction. Give your tithe, give your offering, do this, do that, do that. There is individual who carry that anointing. They know how to make money. They know where to throw the net. When other people are struggling to know where, they know. It's a functionality. Unfortunately, we have raised up the church to be all preachers. It's so such a mistake. I repent myself. I think I did that last year here already. For those who are not here, I repent for that too. Just for you, the new people. Out of 12 tribes, only one tribe was consecrated for the sanctuary. But today, people think the success of a person is to be a preacher. It's a mistake. Not everybody is called to be a preacher. Not everybody is called to be a pastor. Not everybody is called to be an apostle. Not everybody is called to be a prophet. Not everybody is called to be an evangelist. Though we are all called to minister, though we are all called to preach the gospel, though we are all called to prophesy, but the office I'm talking about, many people are called to work and make money and function as prophetic prosperity. I'm telling you the truth today. I want to cancel that spirit over our lives. Oh, I'm called to preach now, and I'm going to give up on my job now and live by faith. Don't be stupid. Be wise. 
keep your job and still do ministry. And if you are called, one day the ministry will feed you. But until then, go and make money. Functionality of the prosperity is amazing. So amazing. I like what this pastor, this prophet did. The woman that her husband served the Lord and she wasn't dead. They were coming to pick up her kid. And the prophet showed up and she connected to the prophet. And the prophet said, go and borrow empty jars. Go borrow empty jars. This is the anointing of the functionality of uh, of, uh, prosperity. He is about to put an end to the debt and release the blessing of prosperity. Obey the prophet and you shall prosper. If you give a glass of water to a prophet, you receive the prophet reward. Today I want to pray for you. Two things. Number one, you know what? I, I just feel like, is Elder Sandrine here today? Where is she? Please get her. God is speaking something here. So, If you're here and you want to have a baby, come, stand on this side here. All right? You want to have a baby, come and stand on the right side. If you're here, listen to the instruction, okay? You haven't started the business yet. You've been hesitating. Should I? Should I not? When? How? Come and stand here on the left side. If you have already your business, don't come. I'm talking about the people. It is in them. They are, yeah, stand here on this side. Praise the Lord. Okay. The baby is there. Is Julius here today? Hunter, where is my hunter? Hunter, stand up, join your wife. You guys go the other side there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. You know, I had a dream last night. After you and I, we finished to talk. And I'm saying this so I can build the faith of other people. I saw that you were owning vehicles of different sizes. Yes, it's you I'm talking to, Joseph. You were owning vehicles of different sizes, two tons and the big ones. They're here in Calgary. And people were working for you in different places, going to the United States as far as Detroit. I saw that. Go for that. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. She had a dream very powerful. I'm speaking it for you. In that dream, it was like in the hospital. And behind the veil, the women were giving birth. Every woman was giving birth. And there were few that were pregnant and they didn't know they were pregnant. Yet they were pregnant. God want to give you a baby. I want to make sure I'm talking to married people though, eh? If you're not married, go sit down. These people have overcome. Watch me. I want you to connect to them as they begin to pray for you. I'm going to ask some of the pastors, Pastor Nilda, come and help them pray. Pastor Phil and Jacin, come and help pray this side. Now I'm coming back to you again. Thank you, Jesus. 
This is bombing in my head here. Jonathan. 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 Stand there, stand there. I, just come, come here, come here. Let me pray for you. Can the church stand up on their feet? We're going to do this quickly. Jonathan, you're dealing with sugar. What is it? Is, is it a diabetes? Is it an hippo, hypo? I don't know how you call Diabetes. This. Diabetes. Okay. God will heal you. Yes. Pastor Dolores, come here. Pastor Michelle, stand here. Pray for him, and he shall be healed. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, I want you to hear me. You have the business idea. You haven't launched it yet. God make all things beautiful in the season. Last Saturday, after we finished this ordination, nomination thing, I was supposed not to be here Sunday. I've been here for three weeks already. But as I was taking my shower, God spoke to me, say, stay again. So what, what I'm acting out here to change my travel schedule to be here this Sunday is for all of you. Amen. There's another group I will call. Please don't be in a hurry. Be patient with me. You need to take fullness of this. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Get, get closer together. You know there are people, if you give birth or they help you to give birth, they can kill your baby. So you cannot give birth anywhere, any place the way you want. Not everybody can be your deliverer for your baby to come out. It has to be delivered by the right hands. So today I want to come and connect with you. Harababa Osadaya. All hands together. No matter where the blockage was, fear, lack of capital, partnership, no stamina, no humph, no clarity of vision, hesitation, confusion, not sure, doubting. I'm standing here today in the name of Jesus Christ. I cancel all the limitations. And I pray for the vision to begin to be clear. Amen. Let this vision begin to grow. Amen. Today, Lord, according to your word, I release these babies from these women and men. I'm talking about the business babies. Amen. The business babies. Amen. The business babies. Amen. Release them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you for expanding the knowledge. And Lord, I pray that you uncover the right connection that they need to bring this thing forth, not only in the earth, but to fruitfulness. By the authority that you are given to me, I release favor, open them, favor, open the business, favor, open the idea and the project, favor, favor, favor. Further, further in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for new businesses in this house. Thank you for securing a testimony for these businesses. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will prosper. In the name of Jesus Christ, it will be profitable. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come here. You can be released. I'll pray for you. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your hand. Fears. Fighting something for so long. And you wonder, Lord, when? I've been prayed for. I've been touched. You visited me. Yes, 
I'm struggling with this. I can't tell anybody, but yet I'm struggling. Father, today I declare the end of that struggle. Father, in the name of Jesus, let it leave and never come back again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I touch your hands. Did you buy vehicles? How many? One. To do business. Did you start it already? Not yet. But you bought the vehicle. <laughs> Father, I bless her. I bless her. Whatever, Father God, she was expecting before starting it, even on this day, I release it. I release the agreement. Now, in Jesus' mighty name, go and start your business in full agreement in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. I want you to begin to pray for the women there. And the men who want the baby, begin to pray for them. The whole church, can we put a music in the background? A music in the background. I want everybody to be engaged. As the music is going on, let's begin to pray. I want you to be free. I want you to look around. If you see somebody, you have a word in your spirit for them, just go and deliver that word to them. We have trained you last Saturday. We could, Saturdays ago, we want you to continue practicing. If I feel something in my spirit, I will bring you your word. But I want you to be ministers, to minister to one another. If God put in your heart to bring an offering, just bring the offering. It's a good thing to praise the Lord, somebody. Please, music in the back there, something. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Begin to pray. Dim the light a little bit. Begin to pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Begin to pray. You feel something in your spirit? Go and minister to somebody, please. Thank you, Lord. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, we bless you, we bless you, we bless you, we bless you. Begin to pray in the spirit. Begin to stir up the water.